Welcome back. Part two of our Thursday evening programme live on Sheffield Live TV is available to watch later on my YouTube channel if you missed, for instance, if you missed part one. And by the way, we will have more of a spread of sport next week when uh, James Gregg returns with his roundup. I am aware that kind of in the last few weeks when he's been gainfully employed elsewhere because he gets the same fee as me here. <laughs> so he doesn't feel that's gainful employment. Uh, we have, for instance, to name check and to congratulate Sheffield Steelers ice hockey mm. for their cup victory. Uh, magnificent. I'm sure that you'll be more aware of that. And Simon Stead and Sheffield Tiger Speedway looking to add to Sheffield's glory portfolio. Mark Crossley uh, is uh, is still with us. He hasn't wandered off anywhere. We've had to tie him down <laughs> during the break. Do you do any nighttime walks, uh, Mark? I don't. Is it just scared of the dark, mate. <laughs> scared of the dark. <laughs> he's been he's been what, 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 Dan Flask, I think, was the video, yeah. video. Lower Bradfield been all over. Yeah, all over the yeah, area. Langset. Fantastic. Even went as far as Whitby. So yeah. And, well, uh, you walked from Barnsley to Whitby? <laughs> no, I, uh, I did a, I did Whit Whitby Town sporting dinner with David Durst over there, so I thought, right. great time to stay over and do the, and do the walk. That there. coastal walk? Yeah, brilliant. Uh, Robin Hood's place to Whitby is fantastic. I, That's I right. want to do that. Five and a half um, miles there, five and a half miles back, yeah. Is it? Do it's it. the same distance going back as it is That's to right, go yeah. there. <laughs> Cleveland Way, yeah. <laughs> Cleveland Cleveland way. 11 miles. <laughs> I'll tell you what, the, I think one of the... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> For the first times I interviewed uh, Mark, it might even be the only time a serious interview, this isn't a serious interview, was um, Sheffield Wednesday 3, Southampton 3. It was, it was in 2006, this was. And I was sitting there covering this match for final score on TV, except they were ignoring me. Uh, we were gotten to BBC One, all the goals had come earlier, and they were totally ignoring me and refusing to come over to me. Yeah. This guy got me on, on BBC One, because he scored in the last minute with a header from a corner. Mm. Yeah? Yeah. Are you a bit sad that that's the thing that people remember from your Sheffield Wednesday? <laughs> Not really, career? because it was... It was <sighs> something I still can't believe to this day. It seems surreal. Yeah. Uh, Brian Laws, the manager at the time, was telling me to get back in my goal. He says, <laughs> you'll never get back if you don't score. And Billy Mercy, the goalkeeping coach, says, go on, get yourself in. And uh, Chris Brunt put a lovely ball in and I just managed to get on the end of it. You did? got a lovely picture in the house of the guy that was marking me that day was a, a young 17-year-old Gareth Bale. Wow. Oh, wow! Yeah, I hadn't realised that. I so remember that. My shout to him was, yeah. uh, "Watch out, Gareth! There's a train coming." You know, so <laughs> I managed to get on the end of it. It was, you it did? was surreal. It, um, it uh, hard to explain, really. A header for a three-three draw. That's right. Yeah. So you draw, you join that exclusive club of goalkeepers who've scored. Mm. Most of them have scored with long kicks downfield. That That's been right. Yeah. Wind assisted or yeah, except. Michael scored, didn't he? With a yeah, there's been a few. Uh, Jimmy, Glass, Jimmy Glass, Jimmy Glass, Jimmy Glass Carlo, kept, the kept them in the league. Famous one. Wow. Yeah. 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 So it's nice to be amongst amongst all them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was, it's certainly a, a, a very memorable moment. What do you make of our goalkeepers? We'll, we'll come on to Simon Stead in a minute, but I'm not sure. I think he knows as much about football as we know about Speedway. So mm. we're trying to get this interactive a bit, but. Our goalkeepers in Sheffield, very interesting at the moment. Uh, let's start with Dean Henderson and your view of him on loan from Manchester United for a second season. Did you see that save last weekend, that double save? Uh, I, I did, uh, and I can usually judge a goalkeeper when I watch him live because I watch him a lot, w w what he's doing, uh, rather than watch the game. Whereas you probably watch the game and not watch the goal. Well, I tend to drift to the goalkeepers. Uh, I saw him at Grimsby earlier on in his career. Um, Shrewsbury. Is that right? Yes, Shrewsbury. Was Shrewsbury, yeah. And I was like that when he went to Sheffield United. And I wasn't sure whether he was ready for that, but wow, I went to watch him again in the Bournemouth, Bournemouth game and he made a save in that game that was like outstanding. Yes, first half, wasn't it? It was, was it, a, it was a, down, it was a, we had one low down. That second yeah. half, he made an unbelievable reaction save as well. Yeah. Um, and them are the kinds of saves that goalkeepers uh, go on and win games for you. How good is he? Top draw. He's a very confident lad as well. You can t I've seen Chrissy Wilder's comments about him that sometimes he might be a little bit too sure of himself, but for me, that, that, that's good. I like that. I like someone who's a little bit sure of himself. Goalkeeper number one for England? Should be? <sighs> it's, it's up in the air at the moment, isn't it? You know, Pope's doing well at Burnley, isn't he? And uh, Pickford's been questioned a little bit. But on, on performances this season and Sheffield United's clean sheets and, and league position, why not? Yeah. 
I mean, it's, it's becoming an irresistible shout for him to become England's number one. Mm. I would have thought Dean Henderson, mm. although we, you know, we'll get, it, it, a little bit later we'll come on to the two Sheffield Wednesday goalkeepers, okay. Cameron Dawson and Joe Wildsmith. Of course, at the moment we're we're in uncharted territory uh, with coronavirus, which, like a lot of things in life, does put football into perspective. I know kind of affects our livelihoods a little bit in terms of what we're covering but at the moment everything's going ahead how are you in terms of of, of, of Speedway and uh, have you got any kind of orders from above regards Not really to it's, it's on until it's off um, yeah. we'll just um, we've got a, a the first team bonding session of the of the season next next week we've got uh, something going on on Tuesday and then uh, press and practice day down at at the stadium on Wednesday, so uh, then it all kicks off Thursday. Uh, Todd Kurtz is meeting, so really we're, we're we're just we're all fired up, ready to go. It's and like I said, it's on until it's off, which is uh, I guess what you've got to do. Uncharted territory, like I said. In terms of crowds, um, I mean, go back to sort of very early in my career when I had and I really enjoyed it covering Speedway at Ollerton and so. Some, some of the people watching for the first time this show tonight, I'm sure they haven't watched any of the other programmes we've done, might uh, remember, as I do, Doug Wire, Reg Wilson, uh, Sean Moran, who was a mm. big, uh, big yeah. signing, Craig Pendlebury, Carl Glover, people like, yeah. like this from the 70s. Yeah. And there were some very healthy crowds. Yeah. Well, well, Doug happened? and Reg are still regulars. Uh, down there, it's uh, actually Doug, regards, Dougie got on, um, on, got a, on bike a bike at the weekend. Uh, at the did weekend. He? Yeah. yeah, did he? Uh, yeah, and uh, apparently he looked really good. Mm. So uh, keep an eye on him. They, they were cracking <laughs> riders and great characters and really good guys to interview as well. Yeah, I think most riders are not not so much these days because I think it's a, a society thing. I think the younger lads could do with coming out the shell a little bit more. Um, maybe as a consequence of phones and iPads and we don't talk to each other like we used to. Yeah. You know, maybe maybe there is a better, but characters like Reg and Dougie and uh, Craig Pendlebury, Sean and Kelly Moran, the Americans were fantastic. Yes. Yeah, but really. Speedway is still uh, it's still got a very loyal following, and also the fact that TV companies over the last sort of 15 to 20 years have wanted to show the sport. Mm -hmm. It's been on Sky Sports, it's been on BT Sport, and still will be in the year ahead with the World Championship. And the domestic Speedway, the Tigers, will be on Eurosport. So you've got broadcasters that want to show it because. You know, if you're flicking around channels, I know footballers will say, oh, yeah, I saw the Speedway the other night, I was flicking around, so I thought I'd stay on it and watch a few races. Mm -hmm. And you've perhaps got people who used to go to Speedway that enjoy watching it now. Um, and hopefully with Sheffield going up into the Premiership now, Al, with some big signings like the three times world champion, yeah. the turnstile clicks will be... Yeah. Will be healthy again. What kind of figure would you hope to get, and what kind of figure have you been used to, to getting, attendance-wise? Ah, oh, it's... What do you think, Nigel? It's, um... I think I think looking at it, I would guess looking around the terraces because they don't publish attendance figures mm -hmm. in speedway like they do in no. football. But I would think in the second division, Sheffield were probably maybe at eight, nine hundred. Yeah. And now I think they can expect to at least double that. Yeah. Double that uh, in, in, the, yeah. in the top division. There were certainly it's a very loyal following. In the seventies, it was two and two and a half thousand. Yes, it was. Yeah, yeah, and they, it in, was. in Poland, you know, it's booming. Yeah. It's booming. Yeah. You go into a league match in Poland and there's 20,000 people there wow. yeah. in yeah. all-seater stadiums. So yeah. th there's obviously there's still a want for it, and I think there's certainly been an upturn in support for, for British domestic league speedway over the last uh, few years. I think the, the, the TV is better than it's ever been, uh, and, and it all follows. Um, it's, it's higher profile now than it's ever been, I think, in, or certainly for a long, long time. Uh, and, and there's a want for it, and I think there's more clubs buying into it. There's new clubs involved in the league, and something more exciting. And you're getting these speedway the superstars in speedway terms. Your Nicky Pedersons, your Jason Crumps, they're coming back to British Speedway, which is fantastic for the sport, fantastic yeah. for, for British Speedway fans, and uh, and for new fans alike, because it, it, that's got to bring fans in. Well, I, I enjoy doing speedway as much as I do darts and football. Do you? I, well, do, I love, I, I love all says, my sport, all my sport, and I mean that. That says a lot. We'll, we'll come back to the subject of Nicky Pedersen and what he can <clears> bring <throat> later on. Just, just returning to the, the Sheffield goalkeepers, mm. um, Cameron Dawson and Joe Wildsmith are you know, regarded as young keepers. I think they're around about 24-ish each. They're not young, but they are in goalkeeping terms. Um, yeah, uh, I've, I've had both of them. I worked at Sheffield Wednesday Academy for a year, yeah. and I had them both coming through uh, same age 
and there was a debate at the time, Dave Jones was manager, which one do we keep? Because they were both the same age, both in, involved with England at the time. Uh, and I said, keep both, you got two good goalkeepers. Now they're 24, now they've got to start showing what they're all about, because that learning, that learning curve bit's gone. Like, you never stop learning, but what I'm saying is they're established now, uh, and one of them has to push on, and the other one will probably have to move on and play elsewhere. Um, who's the better out of the two? I haven't seen them for a while, so it's hard to comment. I felt at the time Joe was, and then I thought Cam was, and then I thought Joe was, and then I thought Cam was. So they've both got uh, different qualities, yeah. but uh, two exciting goalkeepers. And you don't think that it's possible for both to stay in that one place and progress their careers, that one of them... Cameron Dawson, though, has signed a contract for another three years, I think it is. Right. So he's committed. I know Joe right. had a bad injury and he's just back from it and just started playing yeah. again because uh, I, spoke, I spoke to Joe. So, well, that's a good commitment. That's a, I think that's a good uh, renewal for Sheffield Wednesday. Uh, he's done well. He's done well. But as I say, when you get to 24... Now's the time you got to be pushing regular. Who's going to get that number one spot and make themselves an ever present? And it'll be a good battle between the two, certainly. Uh, it's been a, a difficult time for both keepers for various reasons. I mean, Joe Wilson has played well actually, against mm. Manchester City, didn't very he? well. Uh, in what was a very respectable 1-0 defeat. Mm. Cameron Dawson has been in, out, in and out a couple of times and he's been playing behind a team that's just leaking goals and yeah. leaking confidence, which must be hard. It, it's strange, really, because the start of the season was, you, you think, oh, this is the year Sheffield Wednesday are going to really press for promotion. And then all of a sudden, obviously, uh, what happened with Steve Bruce, he left, and then Gary Monk come in, started well, and then... Once that lack of confidence gets in, and I'm sure it's the same in mm. Speedway, it, it, it's hard to get back. Mm. And it, at the moment, you can see the team is totally lacking in confidence. Yeah, uh, making errors. When you get comments from the manager like shirking and hiding, mm. then, you know, mm. they're, they're, they're rare in the severity of criticism, aren't they? Sometimes that's a lot of frustration that comes out of a manager. Mm. Uh, he's probably thinking that he'll probably, you know, come Monday morning he might regret that he's actually said that. A lot do. It happens a lot of the time. But the heat of the moment, uh, they can come out and, and, and say things that they probably regret. And mm. He's criticised the culture, of the, the comfort within. Right. The, it's a highly paid dressing room. The players have been there a long time. Yeah, we, we, we see it a lot, don't we? You know, a uh, big club, again, big club, my old club, Nottingham Forest, when they have a, when they have a dip in form, it, it's the blame has to go somewhere yeah. and it's usually the, the usual in football, the norm is the manager's lost the dressing room. The big now, norm. To this day, yeah. I still don't know what that means, the manager's lost the dressing room, go and find it then. Does it Do you know, ever reply, in your view, that the manager has lost the dressing room? Have you been in dressing rooms where the manager's lost it? I have because oh, to, to, to be a good team, you need 18 players out there on a Saturday that are in it together. Mm. Two or three of them they've got indifferences about the manager can ruin the whole lot. Mm. Yeah. And it seems that that's the that's the norm. I said keeps in the word norm. The norm is you lose two or three of your big players that have got a, a, a difference with the manager and it tends to affect the dressing room. The whole dressing room. Yeah. And you've had that at uh, at Hillsborough with some players being isolated. Yeah, uh, and that's right. That yeah, can kind of fracture things maybe. But and again, the ones that have been isolated, a lot of them have been big characters, mm. so they've still got a massive mm. influence around the place, a massive influence on the younger players that are there, and it's a difficult poison to get rid of. Mm. Well, it'll be a difficult end of the season for all sorts of reasons for Sheffield Wednesday. Mm. I mean, you cover football, uh, Nigel. Uh, you tend to cover it more in the Midlands, but I know you're well aware of. What's going on up here, etc. Be careful what you say because the social media. Well, I've spent, <laughs> I've spent a lot. I mean, I am Yorkshire born, but I'm now based in the Midlands, so I've covered a lot of West Bromwich Albion and Wolves. But in February, um, actually, my run of games in February were Barnsley, Huddersfield, Preston, all over the place. And just going back to what Mark's just referred to there about Wednesday, I, I can re relate to something similar at Huddersfield Town because I do. I covered a lot of Huddersfield games last season. Um, obviously, Jan Zievert didn't work out, mm. and there were certain players there uh, at, at Huddersfield who were still big earners, and the hangover from the Premier League era. Um, there were some of them who were 
you could look from the outside and question their commitment, their belief, their, you know, what I'm saying is, I think in a similar vein, you talk about big earners, big costly dressing rooms, mm -hmm. I think the same applied at Huddersfield, and it's only now that the Cowleys are starting to yeah. make a bit mm -hmm. of a difference where that's concerned. I, I, yeah. I don't know, just, just looking in from the outside, from the press box. Yeah. You know, I, I saw Huddersfield, they were all over the shop in that era, and I think yeah. the, mm -hmm. the, the word coming out was that the, the players were anti the manager. Well, there you, you go. Know. I mean, if you've got a player, so 50 grand a week, who's on a three-year contract, manager bombs him out of the team, we don't want him, he's still there, and I'll guarantee you that that player ain't going nowhere. Mm. That becomes then that start of that poison. I think, yeah. I think Huddersfield the thought they'd found yeah. the, ne the next David Wagner. Mm. by bringing Ziva in, a talented mm. young foreign coach. Mm. And now they've brought in talented young British coaches who've served their apprenticeship in the non-league, yeah. yeah. got Lincoln up from League Two into League One, had that brilliant FA Cup run against Ipswich and yeah. Brighton. And, and, and I think the Cowleys will see them over the line. Yeah, they're very driven. Like Both yeah, the two of them, are very, I know them well, they're very <clears> driven. Yeah. And it, given, a, given time, they'll, they'll get it right. I the, think the, so as well, the, yeah. They're the too, yeah. the too professional and driven to not to. Yeah. Mm. Chesterfield must have hurt you. Uh, mm. I know John Sheridan. I know Glyn Snowden. Yeah. And y yourself there. Good people. Yeah. Without a doubt. Uh, yeah. But it is good. John Pemberton sat there last week, actually. Yeah, he's done Five great. wins out of eight. It often Brilliant. happens, doesn't it? It does. You know. It does. John, <laughs> John Sheridan did it the season prior. It looked like uh, they were going down with Martin Allen. John came in. And you'd say if you want a manager to keep a team up that's struggling, you'd go for John Sheridan because Fleetwood did it. And it just didn't quite work out. A few signings didn't quite work out. There was a f still a few players lingering from, from the, 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 the era before. And we expected to do really, really well. Didn't start too well and found it hard to get going. Mm. So it became a struggle and you, 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 can, you can say we probably d deserve not, not, to, not to be at the club after Christmas, which is what happened. Which you've used as uh, a release, perhaps, mm. a, and a relief, and we'll come on in a moment to potentially um, your charitable yeah. uh, exploits. But um, going back to Simon here, um, I mean, how would you, Nicky, uh, how would you equate the signing of uh, Nicky Pedersen in fo football terms? W what kind of parallel would you could you put on it? I can go it's straight away with that. I think Paolo Di Canio at Sheffield Wednesday. Mm. Oh, yeah. I think when Di Canio yeah. came to Hillsborough, I think Nicky Pedersen, yeah. box office, puts bums on yeah. seats. I could equi I th that, that's the comparison I would make. Yeah. Would, would wow. you be the main that's influence a... in that? In uh, obviously signing. I've I've I've, I've ridden um, and raced against Nicky and. Nicky is one on his own, he's, he's, he's a character, um, he's the, the nicest guy to sit down with off track, but he's one of the most ruthless, ruthless characters on track. And that's <laughs> what's winning really three world titles, he's ruthless. Mm. And um, Some would say dirty and dangerous. <laughs> but he's still got Some three world titles. That. He's got yeah. three world titles. And, um, yeah. But away from the track, he's a, he's a great guy. And, I, and I've always had um, a, relation, a, a good relation, working relationship with him. Mm. And I've raced with him, I've raced against him. Yes, there's been clashes. But when we, went, when we decided we were going to make the step up to the, to the Premiership, um, the promotion asked me who I wanted to lead the side. And I, and I couldn't think of anybody better than bringing somebody like that into the club who'd not raced in the British League for a long time, uh, who is, like Nigel said, absolutely box office, who is still as good now as, as, as when he was in the Grand Prix series. He's still a proven performer. And they said, well, do you, do you think it could happen? I said, well, I know he'll talk. I know he'll have the chat with me. Mm -hmm. So let me just put the feelers out and we'll talk to him. Mm -hmm. And I said, I believe this is the sort of money he's going to cost you. Right. So if you can't afford it, let's not embarrass me by getting involved in it. Yeah. If you think this is what you can afford, bear in mind everything else he brings to the club, then let's push on and try and make it happen. And, and, and we did. Brilliant. And you did. And did it cost you as much as you thought it would cost you? A little you? bit more. Yeah. <laughs> as always, as always. A record signing for Sheffield yeah. Tigers, yes. without any question. Yeah. And you need bums on seats and also standing yeah. on the terraces, because you've got the terraces round, to justify that. And I'm sure people will be very excited to watch Sheffield Speedway into the new season. Mm -hmm. And but everybody, please keep... Well, you don't need me to tell you that, because they're highly entertaining, apart from the 
society value and, dare I say, the coronavirus value as well, of fresh mm. air and exercise and getting away from people of mm. these walks. Mm. But there is a serious side to it as well. There is, yeah. Um, it's, um, like you say, it's, it's gone pretty viral. So we've got together, myself, Dean Windass, John Parkin, Chris Kirkland. Um, we tr we, we've got something in the pipeline that's so close to happening so we can give it all back um, because of the it tends to be in the mental health people that have been inspired by these walks and Dino make your bed and stuff like that and Chris has got his own foundation now that we've decided we want to try and achieve someone to achieve something give it back uh, to that side of that that, cha that kind of charity. This is a, a charity that deals in depression, and, yeah. uh, people's mental health, yeah. and well-being. Yeah, uh, um, oh, we can't name which one yet because we're still in the proceeds of, of, of discussing uh, what we're going to do. We've got a big event coming up, hopefully next year. But I'd love to tell you, but until it, I don't want to make ourselves look stupid in case it doesn't happen. Yeah. But it's a it's a it's a big event that we're hoping to get some really good sponsors from, and yeah. maybe even get a little TV documentary out of it. Hopefully. Love to show some of that, uh, some of that here. We, we won't, let's not let on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but it is quite adventurous, anyway. Yeah, and it will yeah. be a, a very exciting uh, project, and I hope mm. it happens. And it's certainly uh, more topical than it ever was. Um, that uh, you know, you could take the view. Well, more people are depressed than ever before. That's not the fact. Not, not the case. No. It's just that more yeah. people are talking about it. Mm. And there's more awareness. That's what I found out recently over the past three or four months. More people, uh, you know, we're proud. We're, we're, we're fellas. We're proud, and it, it doesn't matter what level it's on. Mm. I mean, look at Gary Speed. I use him as an example, uh, but. It doesn't matter what level, but Did we're you, definitely talking about it more. Yeah, you knew Gary Speed very well. Yeah, very, very well, yeah. Um, well, there was a, the Wales connection. And, uh, you uh, know. Uh, the most genuine top man I've ever met in my life. Mm. And totally unexpected. But Nobody like, had this an thing. No, no one. Not, no one. Not, not, nothing whatsoever. I mean, no. I knew him. Yeah, as, as a great fellow, but not obviously in the way yeah, that you did. Absolutely, and no idea whatsoever. Everybody was utterly whatsoever. devastated and gobsmacked mm. by it. Mm. And yeah, but you what know, a if, player, I, if what it, a player oh, is wonderful well, player. Yeah, yeah. And if yeah. we by yeah. doing this, if we can open out and give a little bit back, uh, then and it, and it helps people. It, it makes it makes us feel better as well. Yeah, but you we, are we've had it in Speedway over the last month, Al. Um, right. One of the riders who raced in the British final, Danny Ayres, sadly um, took his own life on the 1st of February, oh, yeah. uh, a partner and two young children. Wow. I just wish he'd have spoken to people, because mm. I don't think he ever spoke to anybody. In fact, I know people close to him. I don't think he ever spoke no. about his mental no. health and woke up one morning to that news. Speaking to Chrissy Kirkland, uh, he, he'd been advised that there's one in four when he opened his foundation, and he's since realised that there's a minimum three in four cool. suffered at some mm. At some, some time level. in their lives. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm really... Men and women. Yeah, women yeah. as well. <clears throat> I think we should all be grateful for what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. Out there and entertaining. Yes, yeah. as, as you have done for the best part of the last hour. It's been fantastic seeing, no, it's been seeing you guys. Um, Big Norm, wish you all the best. No, thank, thank you so you. much for coming. Thank you. No problem. And uh, Simon Stead, the no, talk about Great Britain either. He's the Great Britain joint team. We'll have to get him back in. We'll have to come back. Get back, back yeah. <laughs> Simon, good, good luck for, to you. you and the, the new Thanks season. Thanks so much. And Nigel, thank you for coming in as well. Pleasure. We'll know that, well, on Saturday afternoons we'll be in communication. We'll be we'll around the up. grounds. <laughs> we will. If you missed it, YouTube later. Thanks for watching. Back here next week. See you then. Bye bye.